or Genesis chapter 37, verses 23 and 24. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. I want all of you to close your eyes for a few seconds. As we ask God's grace, God's presence to move. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we come into thy presence this evening. You are a faithful God, an able God, powerful God, sovereign God, who knows the end from the beginning. This evening, our Father, I am the least to fall. Standing, O Lord, and I know I am empty, Master. This is your word, and the Bible says that thou hast magnified thy word above thy name. Now open my eyes, our eyes, to the truth. Help us to learn what is that you would like to learn. Thank you, Jesus, that you want us to learn. Bless this time with your presence. I ask all this in and through the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I was asking God this week, and God brought me to this passage. It's a very familiar passage in the book of Genesis, chapter 37. I would like to read the two verses again. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. The beauty the Holy Spirit was putting my eyes on, they cast him into a pit and the pit was empty. There was no water. Now, if you allow the Holy Spirit to move, let us think that they cast me in place of Joseph or cast you into the pit, obviously from a height. Nothing happened to Joseph. There was no water in it. So I'm, I'm, I'm assuring that there was some ground. It was cast into the pit and there was no water. Now here, the Holy Spirit would like to share a few things about the life of Joseph. Now in the same chapter, Genesis chapter 37, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. We know the story. Here, one father, Jacob, having 12 children. And one of them is Joseph. And Jacob loves Joseph more than all his children. Now, there's something which the Holy Spirit would like to tell to the parents as we move along. You may have two children. You may have three or whatever the number is. Never love a, ch a child or show a difference between one children, one child to another. It's very important here. Israel loved Joseph. And the same verse, when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peacefully. Joseph was not a remekosha, a bad person at all. He was 17 years old. I'm cutting it short so that the Holy Spirit may move on. He was 17 years old, this little guy. He had a troubled childhood. How do you say that? He lost his mother. Now, People who have lost parents at a very young age, they know the pain that they go through. Those who have parents never understand the value of parents. It's a very f fact. If I get a hurt in my hand, I know the pain. Others just listen to it. In the same way, this Joseph lost his mother. And the beauty when I was I was studying on the word, these 12 children are not from one woman, as we all know. They're from four different women. Four different women. And they were all together. But then he loved Joseph more. Now this act of Jacob made other brethren develop jealousy, hatred for this little Joseph. Now... The one quality of Joseph was, as his brethren call him, is called a dreamer. I would just like to read one dream of Joseph from the same chapter 37, verse 7. For behold, 
we are binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose, and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about, and made ordinance to my sheaf. Now, obviously, Joseph had many dreams. He got many dreams, and he used to share those with his brethren. Now, at that 17 years, I'm sure he never understood that he was being aided by his own brethren. We can understand if people, maybe at the workplace, hate you. Or maybe your neighbors hate you because you do something which they don't like it. Or maybe you have enemies if you're from a political field. It's understood. But this guy, we're talking about one family, one father. And he used to always share dreams. And the other dream, which I'm coming to the point, 37th chapter, verse 10. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down yourselves to the, to the earth? Now this is just what happened before he was put into the pit. They were filled with so much of rage that they wanted to put jo kill Joseph. And that is the reason they were hatching a plan, own brethren. And this guy was sent by his father to look after their brethren. No conversation, but the moment Joseph came close, they put him in the pit. Now, if you observe, they put him into a pit. Now, let's say we throw something into the pit. There is all possibility that there is some hurt. A person being thrown into the pit and there was no water in it. That the impact would have been so powerful. But the point was... Though nothing is mentioned here, but the pain, the trauma that Joseph might have gone through. He came for a purpose. The purpose was to see what his brethren were doing. But this brethren want to finish that life. If you put yourself in Joseph's place this evening, he was dreaming. He's a dreamer. When God gives you dreams, we get excited. God gives you a word. We're so excited that this, this is for me. But Reboko, we don't know how God will accomplish that promise in your life and in my life. If you are Joseph for a moment, he was thinking about all these dreams, but everything turned upside down in that one day. His own brother. Remind, just put yourself in Joseph's place. How much pain and agony he might have faced. His heart was broken. There was no time for him to react. Put into the pit. And we all know he was sold to Ismailites. The point here this evening is, we are talking about the life of Joseph. He was a dreamer he received from God. But now he's in a pit. I don't know how he felt when he hit the ground. When he hit the ground, that pain. The, the, the greater pain he might have felt was, it was his own brethren throwing him down. I'm telling you the greatest pain we have is when our own blood throws away. It can be for any reason. They hide their faces. Bible says never hide your face from your blood. That's what word says. Here, I would like to move on. Now, from the pit, Joseph was taken as a slave. Now, if you go to the same book of Genesis, chapter 39, I would like to read from verses 3 and 4. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made him all that he did to prosper in his hand. But before that, I want to read from the verse 2. Chapter 39, verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master. See the words that is written. It says the Lord was with Joseph. Where? In the palace or where? In a kingdom. He was as a servant, a slave, and the Lord was with Joseph. Here, it's very, very important. I would like to go to the book of Acts and then come back. Please go to the book of Acts chapter 7. So it is for us to understand something from the life of Joseph. Acts chapter 7, verse 9. And the patriots moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. And delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, 
king of Egypt. Here there's a point. God delivered him out of all his afflictions. Remember, Christians, when a person is going through difficult times in his life, please don't jump to a conclusion that he has done something wrong. A person who has been chosen by God has got a special plan and purpose that can be a bo the man or a woman. It doesn't matter, but please don't come to a conclusion. The Holy Spirit saying, sometimes God allows afflictions. And in Joseph's case, the first thing was he was sold, but before that he was in a pit. Pit is a hopeless situation. I'm sure he might have called out to his brethren. I don't know what kind of conversation it happened. Or maybe they just threw him and then went and stood at a distance. Least bothered about their own blood. I'm telling you the pain and Joseph already had a troubled childhood, lost his mother, had pain and this was double pain. Here in chapter 39, we see the Lord was with Joseph and he was a prosperous man. Now in the same chapter as the Holy Spirit leads, now Joseph was not really having a wonderful life. He was missing his father obviously, a father who loved him who gave him a coat of many colors because he loved him. In spite of not really understanding what was going on, Joseph, Joseph, Genesis chapter 39, verse 7, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, Lie with me. Verse 9, There is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? I want all of you to understand the Holy Spirit is saying when we go through afflictions, difficulties, there can be two outcomes. Either you allow, thank you Lord, the Holy Spirit to operate in your life and get to the image of Christ or else you become more stubborn, resilient, and trying to fight against the plan and purpose of God. Here, in this case, Joseph had a bad experience. Into the pit, now into the slave, now he's made a ruler over certain things. But here comes the temptation. He's a young man, by the way. He's a young man. But the beauty of Joseph's character as he goes through that valley of pain and affliction, when he had this temptation, he said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Thank you, Lord. The way we react to temptations determines how much we fear God. Joseph was a, a, a person who honored God in every stage of his life. Let me, every stage, not in good days, in happy days, we will say, praise the Lord. Let us have a prayer meeting for the Lord answered my prayer. The Lord has blessed me with a job, with an increment. I got no problems. I'm the happiest person on this earth. We are so, so happy. But this Joseph life is not being fair to him. Now this woman, and it says, and it came to pass as she spake to Joseph day by day. The temptation kept on haunting him. But then he never fell to the temptation. And then because he did not, thank you Lord, fall or bow down to the temptation, he was cast into the prison. From the pit to being a ruler and back to a dungeon. This Joseph. Now the point here is in the dungeon, hallelujah. He was going through that pain. I would like to read Genesis chapter 40, 15. You know I'm just moving forward. Genesis chapter 14, 15. This is what Joseph says. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of Hebrews. And here also have I done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon. No fault of Joseph. But still, second time, he's put it with a dungeon. And here, we know the story of the butler. How Joseph revealed that dream to the butler. And he asked the butler... Remember me when your turn comes. But he forgot. We all know that. But then, the another opportunity, another promotion. When the Pharaoh had a dream, I'm just cutting it short. And then this butler said, I'm sorry, I made a sin. This is about Joseph who told me the interpretation of the dream. Now, in the same Genesis chapter 41, 
verse 16, when he was brought forth to Pharaoh, Joseph said, Joseph answered Pharaoh saying, it is not in me, God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. See the attitude of Joseph. He is not even boasting anything good about himself, but he's saying, it is not in me, because the answer comes from God. See the beauty, the character of Joseph. And here we all know how he interpreted the dream and then how Pharaoh made him a ruler and he changed the name we all know. But here comes the story. First, God gave him a dream. But then after the dreams, nothing ever, Joseph was ready, came into his life. He was never ready for a pit. God did not tell him. Listen to the voice. He did not, God did not tell him that my son, I'm, I'm going to do this thing where that your brethren will put into the pit. God did not tell Joseph that you will have a temptation with a woman. God did not again tell of all these things. There's something, thank you Lord, what the Holy Spirit would like to remind all of you here. God gives us a promise, a word, but he will never reveal the entire plan. He will never really reveal. It is only one day at a time. But we want, no Lord, I want everything. You gave me this word. Now I'm in a pit, a hopeless situation. But your word says, the one who has called us is faithful. His word remains the same because heaven and earth may pass away, but my words will not pass away. This Joseph never, ever, thank you, Lord, ever sin. Now, I'm going to move forward and go to Psalms 34, 19. Just a few things which the Holy Spirit wants to. Psalms 34, 19. It says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Why these afflictions in the life of Joseph? Did he deserve it? Absolutely no. I'm, I'm recovered. The Holy Spirit is saying, change, change your mindset. My dear children, says the Lord, Rabbi, change your way of thinking. Don't live under the false impression because you've been bought with the blood of Christ. All days will be wonderful. I'm saying not at all. It is a lie. That is the reason God said for my graces sufficient for the you will go through unexpected situations the world is going through the most unexpected covid where people are wearing masks and they don't know why but they are hoping but inside there is so much of fear fear for life some of them are not even getting into their relatives houses just saying this is the way we are living, my friends, unexpected. We don't know what is what will happen tomorrow, but there is good news for every true believer who has a desire to walk like Joseph. He had a dream in that. Thank you, Lord. If you go to Genesis 37, it says, verse 7, For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obedience to my sheep. Go to Genesis chapter 42, 6. That promise came to pass. And Joseph was the governor over the land. And he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bore down themselves before. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Rabash. There was a dream, a promise. It took so many years, so much of pain. So much of heartbreak, I don't know what he was going through inside. Because only we know what we are going through, the pain inside. Thank you. Physical pain, we can tell. If there are scratches, people can make out. But the internal pain, when the heart is bruised, when your dreams are shattered, you wanted to do something, maybe you have a word from the Lord, but nothing is in moving in the right direction as per your eyesight. But faith is not that. And here that word came to pass. I'm telling you, Holy Spirit was reminding me, God allowed all these afflictions to test the character of Joseph. I repeat, all these afflictions in your life is not to show you bad in the sight of people because God said, for I surely know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to bless you, not to harm you, and to provide your future. That is what is clear understanding for every believer is. But 
as I was hearing the voice of God, and I'm, I'm sure you all will be listening to his voice, afflictions are a way or means that God uses to test or refine our character. In that testing, our true colors come out. How do, God is not surprised, thank you Lord, because God knows good days, anyone can praise God. Anyone, even a little kid will be, it's my birthday, I'm very happy. But not all days are your birthdays, it's one day in a year. In the same way, afflictions show, thank you Lord, the inner beauty, inner man. The character of that inner man is revealed, reflected in afflictions. Joseph did nothing wrong, but it was God's will. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Rabasha. Thank you, Lord Rabasha. I want all of you to go to 1 Peter 3.17. This is very important. Some, some of you have this doubt. The Holy Spirit. 1 Peter. Why? Why then is all this happening? Why then? Go to 1 Peter. Chapter 3. Verse 70. 1 Peter chapter 3. For it is better... If the will of God be so, that he suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Many have a doubt. I'm doing what is pleasing in the sight of God. But why is this evil happening in my life? I would like to repeat 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. For it is better if the will of God be so, that he suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Remember that. It is not that... For all good that you do, you'll get good in return. Maybe you sometimes may have to f get evil for your good. Maybe for your love. Nowadays, love has become so cute word to use. But really that love of Christ is missing in the body of Christ. We are seeing the stages of Joseph. Received a word, put into the pit, picked up from the pit from a hopeless situation, sold like a slave, then got promoted and then got demoted and then again got lifted. And then the story is, go to please Genesis chapter 50. The beauty is, I'm telling you honestly, this is, this is the heart of Christ and Joseph. Please go to book of Genesis chapter 50. And here, as we all know in this chapter, 17, it says, so shall I say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren. And this, and here this context is, Jacob is no more, father is dead, and all the brethren are now scared. Will Joseph take revenge? Because this is what we have done to Joseph. So listen to the words of Joseph. I will re read from Genesis chapter 15, verse, So shall I so shall he say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake, and his brethren also went and fell down before his face. Behold, we be thy servants. Now this is what Joseph said. Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, he thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day to save such people alive. See the heart of Joseph reflecting the heart of Jesus. He did not hold on to the grudge.